And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. <laughs> All right, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have the honor of having a man who is so hot right now. He is on fire. He has been tearing it up. A big win against Kelvin Gasolum, a submission win, and then a huge win against Gilbert Burns. My man, Sean Brady, you are looking good, brother. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Uh, you guys are literally one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, I'm actually a huge fan of you guys. You guys are the shit. There's, if you go on my Spotify, you can scroll and see you guys are right there. So, uh, yeah, I always love talking to you guys. And like we were saying earlier, the week after a fight, you get to do your interviews and yeah, yeah. relax a little bit. It's, it's the best week. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Tell everyone why we're your favorite, right? It's because you busted my balls when I said something bad about you one time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and since then, right. we've, we've been... That's I why he's the called the punk. I, one of the best things about this fight was I showed that my striking doesn't suck. <laughs> and I have, and I and have, have cardio, have, which oh, I've yeah. been hearing about. I'm like, these motherfuckers, <laughs> not you guys, but I'm like, people, I'm like, people saying I have no cardio. I'm like, this is, that's like one of my, uh, that's my thing. Like, that's yeah. and my stand-up too. Like, I have good stand-up. I just didn't have a chance to show it. And even... In that fight, I feel like I, I could have done way better, but yeah. um, yeah. So it was a great um, just it's a great performance, but yeah, you definitely said I had no cardio because I had a broken nose. Uh, I was like, oh, his cardio a little suspect. Uh, He's like, my bro, I, <laughs> my fucking my nose was turned the <laughs> fucked up. Still, I mean, it's still fucked up, uh, but. Yeah, but man, so, it was nah, funny. He came aggressive at me in my DMs. He's like, "Yo, bro, I've got him. good cardio, right. man. I just this I and like, this." Damn. I was like, "All right, bro, I bro, I've heard it before." The, I hit you with the with the Twitter finger. Yeah, yeah. Every every <laughs> fight, every every fighter gives an excuse. Okay, okay. Yeah, then yeah, sure yeah, enough, yeah. what does he do? His next couple of fights comes out and proves me wrong. I'm like, "You yeah, son of a yeah. gun!" <laughs> great That's stuff. That's the way though. to do it, man. No, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. But hey, man, great performance over the weekend. I mean, you know, just. What, what, when going into that fight, what was your main concern with Gilbert? Like everyone was talking about, oh, his jujitsu is probably a little bit better than Sean's. You know, the yeah. striking. I was saying a little bit yeah. of the speed. I thought you were going to have a hard yeah. time with, but in the first yep. couple of exchanges, I was like, oh, speed's not yeah. a factor. You know, yeah. and uh, but what was your concerns Who coming? Said into that the speed fight? was equal. Thank you very much. Yes, he did. He did. Thank you very much. My biggest, um, I mean, obviously, like, I think like. Pound for pound, like I'm better than Gilbert. Like I'm a huge fan of Gilbert, but I think like if we competed jujitsu, like I think I would win. Like I 100% be truly believe that. Um, so the, my biggest concern with Gilbert was not letting him do what he does well, and that's if you let Gilbert walk forward on you, land shots, it's going to be a long night for you. So my biggest thing in my training camp was putting Gilbert on his back foot, always moving my feet, always having my head on a swivel, always just continuing to make him guess whether I was jabbing or hitting that oak, that um, inside leg kick or the outside, just making him constantly have to react so that he couldn't set up what he was trying to do. And to be completely honest with you, he landed like one overhand on me, which was a good punch. And I ate it and I knew right then and there, I'm like, I can take his best shot and he's not going to put me yeah. down. Like, And the only time I've ever been knocked out which i you can't get knocked out by being awake against Bilal when i was still standing up i've never been dropped or i've never mm -hmm. been knocked out cold like i've been of course i've been dazed and rocked but i've never hit my butt from a punch mm -hmm. i've never been knocked out cold so i know i knew as soon as i took one of those big shots from him i'm like i can eat his shot and i can return forward and continue to walk forward and put him on his back foot and that's that's what i did my entire training camp was just making guys uncomfortable and just pushing forward and just staying, keeping my, my volume high. I think I landed like 270 something strikes on him. So I just wanted to keep the output high and just keep him on the defensive. So he couldn't be on the offensive, you know, whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. 
Roll, train, ride, or play. But stay hydrated and stay salty. Did you take a look at like his age is obviously something that is more of a concern for him. I think as he's getting older, I've been in that age bracket for a yeah, while there yeah, and just knowing yeah. that the conditioning in a five round fight was it, yeah. was your whole mentality through camp was obviously to put him on his back foot, but be the one that was putting the pressure, make him 100%. fight off the back foot, which makes him more tired, but also to test that cardio yep. because of his age. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But, and if, if you look at Gilbert, like he never really ever had cardio issues. Like, if you go back and watch him versus Woodley, he beat the shit out of Woodley over five rounds. He's went to war with Chemaev. He's done all these things, and cardio was never an issue. But I'm like, if I can just keep up like a pace and just continue as I was like, if I can keep going like this, eventually like guys go like this, but then they dip, and I can just continue to surge like that. And even even in the fifth round, four, like I'm tired, mm -hmm. but I just For continue sure. the push. You, like at the end, that's why I lay down. I'm like, I don't have to hold this pace anymore. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm like, because you're fucking tired. But I, I know how to sustain that and continue to go. But once it's over, it's like, all right, I don't have to do this anymore. But that was 100 percent in the back of my mind. His age, and I mean, I don't think like that really played a huge part into it. But of course, when you're getting a little bit older, you're not. Maybe you're not uh, doing all the things you should be. Whereas I know me, I'm doing fucking, I did more than I ever could for this camp. And uh, so I just knew that I was going to be able, I knew I was going to get tired, but I knew I was going to push and be able to, to continue to push. Yeah. My question is that we, would, we looked at this fight and I thought Gilbert was now going to face someone that was not worried about going to the ground with him. Obviously, exactly. you, you didn't want to be underneath him, but yep. you were not, you definitely yep. not worried about going to the ground with him. We talked nope. about that. But one of the things that I want to know if you guys picked this up before the fight, if you picked it up, you know, just looking at film, mm -hmm. you were throwing beautiful one, two, three, fours, fives going forward after him, and he consistently would just defend. He would not counter off. Yeah. Him. It was yeah. always just the defense. Did you pick up that he was doing that with other opponents? So we knew that Gilbert, he usually hard shells, like, Bad. So he'll yeah. hard shell and then he'll either either overhand or like a big left hook. So he really we knew that he hard shelled and he would throw back. So we were working a lot of like either like as soon as I was hitting him, either coming forward, clinching, or retreating, but he wasn't throwing back at all. So eventually like he was strong against the cage. I definitely probably could have scored more takedowns, but I didn't want to waste energy. Like his leg his legs were heavy. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, all right, my coach just said he's showing up so bad shoot in the middle and that's where the one i just blast doubled right through him because he was showed up so bad he couldn't even see my shot coming so yeah that's something i was expecting him to throw heavier off of him showing up which he didn't do but we knew that that was one of his things like and that's kind of a bad defensive thing that he does is he shows up so hard he can't really see so like if you watch the fight like i was sneaking like little punches just oh, over yeah. and like jack della did the same thing like he showed up so bad, you were able just to get those little those little shots in there. So, um, yeah, we definitely picked up on that. What was the conversation like with the UFC after that? Was there any conversation about what potentially might be next, or like just in terms of, are we looking to keep you a little bit uh, more active and busy two three times? Yeah. More money? nothing, more nothing money? yet. Um, so as long, I told them, uh, I want to fight before I have my daughter. So she's due in February. So whether it's December or early, like I know their first card they usually do in January is like the second week of January because yeah. they have that little break. So as long as it's any anywhere in that um in that time frame before my daughter, I'm 100% down. But uh, there hasn't been no conversations yet. I'm thinking I want Colby. Like I that, that's truly truly what I want. I want Colby. And if I have to take a step back, I'll do Ian Gary. But um, if I want to get into the top five, I think it would be Colby. Um, but. You never, yeah, you, 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 you never know with that guy. So uh, yeah, yeah, what, 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 we'll what, see. What, but yeah, no, no talks of that because there's 700 fucking fighters on the roster. Like yeah. they're probably, they probably like I just fought. Like they probably just put me at the back of the line, you know. Mm. So like I don't know where I am in that. Like squeaky wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta I'll, be on him. 
I'm gonna no, be. They're, and yeah, and they're and I think they're like I think that was like my coming out party of that fight. Like I really like it was my it was my fight that like set like Kelvin like was a good win. Um, but beating Gilbert and beating Gilbert over five rounds, I think like the UFC brass is probably looking at me and now like all right like maybe we can get behind this kid. So that's where, that's what I'm hoping. Where are you thinking possibly when the new rankings come out for the UFC? Where are you wanting to be at? Where do you think that that, that number? Oh, he's already be? up at six. I'm six. I'm he's six. Six now. I'm six. six. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm six. I I was hoping they were going to bump Colby down and put me at five. Yeah. But uh, I just don't understand. Like no my one man's does. last win was <laughs> don't Masvidal. Even. No the, one knows. I'm the, I'm the first one to talk. No, that it's like I truly, truly don't under like I just I don't get it. But um, they just took Connor off the fucking rankings like a month ago or some shit. Like I'm like, dude, what are you guys doing, man? It it's uh it's it's bizarre. It's yeah. bizarre. But now I'm hearing Colby might be fighting at MSG, but against who who mm. who who like they're saying him versus Dustin Poirier. That ain't gonna happen. No, but that's Dustin, not happening. No, that's Dustin came out and said he doesn't want that yeah. fight. It's it's fake it's fake news. So um that <laughs> fight news. that's the that's the fight out. Him or him or Ian would make the most sense because I think they're probably gonna do Jack and Shavkat or Jack and Usman, like somewhere in there. Um but then I hear Usman might be fighting Bilal for the belt. But that's a, like that doesn't make sense to me. I think Bilal should sit and let these lit the, lit Usman, lit Shavkat, like I think Shavkat, his last fight was uh, Wonder Boy, which I'm a huge fan of Wonder Boy, but he's 40 years old. Yeah. It's a, it was a very good matchup for him. Like I think he should have one more before. Mm -hmm. So I think some things have to play out at the, in the top five before um, we know who's fighting next. No, I actually kind of agree with you on this situation. Now, everyone wants to jump Shavkat up because he's he's undefeated. There's a lot of, of hype around him. 18 and 0, 18 finishes. I get it. Yeah. But, um, I, I, they don't I want don't to take know. a chance of him losing, and then all of a sudden the stigma behind him is gone too. This is the biggest. Yeah. This is a bigger money maker yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. look, I agree. So are you looking? I'm for me. I look at this, and I look at Colby obviously as being the number one. I'd like to see you fight. Uh, yeah. Outside of that, though, I would probably jump you right to Kamara Usman, and we just had I'd Usman on. Him. You know, hundred percent. I'd fight him, and I think that's a great fight. That's a big, big long. name, yeah. huge name. Yeah. Kamara Usman is phenomenal i don't i'm not sure if he wants to be at 70 anymore i mean he since he had such a great performance yeah. against uh hamza but i mean no one really wants to cut that way let's just be honest <laughs> yeah so. i mean dude, trust me i bro i i cut i cut 20 i do 20 literally 20 the week of like yeah they weighed me in the back at the ufc i was 194 like i'm like i cut uh, i cut a i cut a fair amount of weight too so but no one wants to do it but yeah. the smarter you do it the easier it is like i I got down to 69 Thursday night, had a slushy at the UFC PI, but it's because I do, I do the right things in and out of training camp, yeah. you know, like, like I was at the PI for Joey's fight and I did like a DEXA scan and all that stuff. I was 194 and I was 9% body fat. Like I'm so lean at one in the one nineties that, but that's all. Cause I just, I'm a 365 day a year fighter. Like I don't drink alcohol. I don't do like, this is my life and yeah. that's and that's how it should be. But then you got these guys, like even like Gilbert, like I love Gilbert. Um, but the weigh-ins, weigh-ins, I being the main event is awesome. One, you get to roll up, you're the first person on the scale. I was literally on the scale at nine o'clock. I'm drinking by nine oh one. So they changed the rule in Nevada where you have to weigh in, it used to be nine to eleven. Now it's nine to ten. Like if yeah. you're not on the scale by 10 o'clock like technically they could cancel your fight so it's coming down to the wire it's like 9 40 9 50 9 55 and um i had a camera crew with me ufc journey was following me and i'm like trying to drink and they're like what do you think have you ever had a, an opponent miss weight i'm like bro i'm not even i was like let me just drink my fluid yeah. like, i'm not <laughs> even know. concerned oh, about God. this That's yeah it. so 10 o'clock rolls around I'm like, holy shit. Joey Pfeiffer sitting in the parking lot. He's like, yo, Gilbert's running in right now. Literally running in. It's 10.03. Technically, mm. he's past the, the time. Gets on the scale, and they know what they're doing. Like, they don't have digital scales for a reason. So he gets on the scale. <laughs> he gets on the scale. Right. And, the things, and my manager's watching the thing just go like this. So I don't even know if he was oh. 171, but they're like, 
171. Yeah. I'm like, all right, like, I don't care. The, the fight's on. But I'm like, man, like, this is crazy. No. Like, well, they're, so, I'm going to tell you right now, they're not going to cheat for him. But the difference, uh, the difference of that digital scale, yeah, and that when you know when you're taking a look at that that tri level and it's doing this little, that's the difference of one seventy one point one, one seventy one point two, hundred percent, and they're gonna lose fights off of that digital scale. So yeah, they go, no, well, we, and there we, is. We the the and what am I gonna do? What am I gonna exactly? Like, I'm gonna bitch and lose my fight or my. Of course not. Yeah. But if you have those digital scales, like you know, you get on there oh, it, and it locks in your number, mm -hmm. and you are one seventy one or you're not. You know. So yeah. I would like to see them move to that. But, That's uh, not happening. That ain't gonna happen. You right There's now. too much money on the line. You, millions yeah. and millions of dollars. You can give up That's on that not... one. You will have become champion. No. You will have retired, yeah. and your little girl would be in college. <laughs> Before you could ever even <laughs> think of that happening. Before they <laughs> even consider that. Yeah, that's it. But um, no, nah, it's it, everything was it was it was great. So I, I, but yeah, as far as Usman though, at, um, I don't know if he's going one eighty five, one seventy. That would be um, that's another one. That'd be that'd be a great one. Well, but, we um, talked we talked to him. His big thing was you know about you know he's been the champ. He's been there. He's done all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He's reached those yeah, goals. And his big course. thing is fighting people that excite him. And I don't blame him. I mean that's. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the one he, thing is, he, he's earned that. Yeah, I, I agree with you because the one thing, like right now, you at least you're in that position that I think is always the good position to be in because you're moving up, you're fighting top level people like yep. Gilbert, yeah, but you have targets and you can yep. target in on those people and it gives you, you mm -hmm. know, a goal. And goals yeah. are so important when you're yeah. in that position. So, like you said. You're in the gym 365 days, man. You're always training. You're always yeah. at this point of your career getting better. And that showed yeah. that showed in your fight against Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. Where it's tough when yeah. you're the champion and yeah. you don't have that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I, and that's why, like, when guys say they want to go a different direction, like, I don't get mad or I don't, like, go online and, like, talk shit about them. Like, even, like, I wanted the Wonder Boy fight for the longest. And Wonder Boy's like, dude, like, he, he's like, I'm not fighting you. I'm 40 years old. I'm a gr <laughs> You're you're going to take me down and you're going to smother me. And I'm like, you're 100% right. Yeah. So I understand where you're at in your career. Yeah. Um, but then on the other side, it's like, if that's the fight you're looking for, then maybe you shouldn't be in the rankings, you know? That's true. And that's kind of, that's like, that's how I look at it. Uh, it's like, if you want to have fun fights, cool. But let these other guys who are trying to climb the rankings. So Usman, same thing. Like if maybe 185 will excite him because he's never been a champion at 185. There's different guys to fight at 185. So that could be something for him as well. But I don't know. There's guys that make careers off of that, right? Like, I mean, look at Colby, right? He gets done losing yeah. the, his title shot for the third time. And what does he do? First thing he calls out is who? Wonder Boy, the 40, 41 yeah. year old. Like, that's, yeah. that's what Colby does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, look, the other thing, too, is you talked about how you want to try to get a fight in before your daughter's born. Uh, you know, I, I, will, I will give the UFC a lot of credit. Like, when they know that a fighter has a baby coming or they know they have something, a wedding coming, yeah. they will do their best to kind of try to get that in before for so sure. you can have that money available for, for you sure. for when your baby comes or for when the wedding comes or for whatever yeah. it is. So that might be a good conversation for whoever your manager they is. They did it um, for my wedding. Like, my wedding was coming up. I forget yep. when it, like, the, but they scheduled me right afterwards. Like, Perfect. they're like, I was like, I want my wet. My fight was... 10 weeks afterwards. Like I had a perfect training camp and but yeah, like I know a lot of people like complain. Like I've personally never had any issues with the UFC. Like they've always done right by me. And um, I know everyone else is, everyone has their own stories, but um, yeah, up to this point, I have no complaints. I'm making good money. Um, I'm, I'm living my dream, you know? So, Look, fighters I, will find any reason to bitch about something. Okay. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. we're, we're, I, you know, as well as I, everyone knows, I, they, all the fighters are very selfish. You know, when yep. they want something, they expect the UFC to jump. And the UFC is like, hey, man, we're, we're a multi-billion dollar company. We'll yeah. jump when we're ready. And there's fucking 700 of us to go around. Yeah, so. right. And it's I tell this story Jeez. all the time. I've probably told it on this podcast at least 10 times, but I'm going to continue to say it. I sided with Joe Silva one time and was like, hey, how come I can't fight this fight right after the Pettis fight fell through for my title shot against him? It fell through. And I'm like, how come I can't get this guy? He's like. See everybody here. This is your weight yep. class. All the guys in red, unavailable. There's 120 of you guys. Just in your weight class, all the guys in red in the top 20, unavailable. There's only yeah. these two guys. Yep. This guy is getting married. 
this guy is yeah. like basically is already Andrew. matched up. It was RDA. Andrew, yeah. He's like, that's all I have to choose from. So do you want to mm-hmm. wait? And then luckily Benson, who was the one getting married, literally was like, I'll fight. Yeah. And so yeah. he he would, took it upon himself to to go ahead and fight. I was like, hey, and thank I try you. to explain that to people. People ask me all the time, they're like, when's your next fight? Like, especially right after you fight, I'm like, you gotta understand it's one, like maybe I have an injury. Mm-hmm. Maybe my opponent, the other guys in the rankings have injuries. Then other guys are matched up already. Yeah. That there's there's so many outside factors of just of besides your own person, but everybody else, you know. And um I had great conversation recently with uh sean shelby and me and Sh- like sean was super cool and he yeah. was like listen man like this is this is what it is and um he kind of explained it like same way you were just saying that joe did to you he explained it to me and they're just yeah they're just they're working with imagine the anxiety you would have if you had their email of all the people that email you every day with injuries and this like I would like I would be so stressed out, you know. So <laughs> it's I, it's so not even the guys off, that are on your roster guys, emailing you. It's not even the guys on your roster. It's like randoms going, "Hey, can I get yeah. a fight in the UFC? Oh, I'm ready." Who wants to be in the UFC? Yeah. Sending you their fucking their yeah. highlight reels and everything. Like it's it's got to be overwhelming. Well, the selection is also once you get into the top ten, you really only have that selection of the top yeah. ten. You're not trying to yeah. fight guys that are ranked outside the top fifteen. Like no. you're like, look, I worked no. my ass to get here. You know, yeah. and now I'm here. I'm not, and these are my selections between the top ten. Well, and top that's 12. what happened with this with yeah. this fight. So I fought Kelvin. I had a small ligament tear in my wrist. Um, they offered me the Luke fight. I needed like three weeks after the time period that they gave me. So they offered that fight. I think it was the end of March. I'm like, hey, I can't do this date, but I'll be completely good to go by April. So you know how that goes. Now, like they're like, all right, well, we'll see when you're healed. So I was trying to get a fight since. April, mm. we um nothing came about until June. They hit us up about uh Gilbert. It was originally supposed to be July for Gilbert. So Lloyd, my manager, calls me. He's like, "All right, July twentieth, main event, Gilbert." I'm like, "Cool." Calls me back the next day. All right, it's August eleventh. You and Gilbert. I said, <laughs> "All right, cool." Like, just get a contract. He called me one more time. He's like, "Bro." It's 100% done, but it's September 7th. I said, Louie, just please just get me a contract that says <laughs> September 7th. So I was like, at that point, I didn't care. I'm like, it's Gilbert. It's a main event. Yeah. I don't care. But it's a lot longer than I wanted to wait. But at the end, but I'm happy. Everything works out for a reason. Yeah. That September 7th, it worked, everything worked out. And now I'm in a great spot. But um, yeah, it's, it's a process to get, to get a fight. What's the, what's your take on Jack Della Maddalena, man? I think he's a fantastic fighter. He's a great prospect coming up. I mean, he's had he yeah. got a lot of hype around him. Yep. He's a lot better than I gave him credit for when I was yeah. watching him early in his career. Uh, you know, what's your take on him, though? Well, I mean, me and Jack were matched up to fight. Um, we were matched up. So two weeks before that fight, I had uh, I got an infection in my elbow, and I was in the hospital for like three or four days. And not, it's not funny at all. Cause Jack actually came out and said like something, he just said some stupid shit. Like I shit the bed. Like, I don't know if it's how these Australians talk or whatever, but he essentially said like, I dropped the ball on the fight. And, um, so I'm like, I, I made a statement, like, listen, like you're a fighter, you've been in gyms. I'm sure you've known guys who've gotten staff infections and they've gotten serious. Um, I would never say that about you. I would never say that, wish yeah. that on you, on your team. Months go by, he fights Gilbert was losing that entire fight until he turns it around, gets to knee great on him while he Gilbert broke his arm with that kick. Jack ends up in the hospital, gets a staph infection and that's where he's been since. So, I mean, like uh, you shouldn't say shit. You should. I'm not, I, I would never wish. And I said that I'm like, yo, I would never wish this upon you. Turns out now he's got this fucking infection in his arm that he's been dealing with since yeah. March. And there's no, there's nothing coming. Like his shit was bad. Like it got, I he had like a he had the bag on his side and everything. So um, and you haven't heard anything about him mm-hmm. since then because he's like I don't even know if he's fighting this year or what. So um, but as far as a fighter, like probably one of the hardest punchers in the division. Great scrambling abilities. Um, great puncher from both stances. Like he's he's a great fighter, but uh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the hell is going on. With I him. had a buddy who had staff in his knee, and it spread up into his into his quad. 
And he literally, they had to cut him open and, and yep. kind of scrub out the infection. But when they did that, they took so much of the tissue that his leg never looked the same. He never could be a, an athlete again. Couldn't the play soccer two, anymore. Only two times I've had infections were two weeks before each one of them. It was mm -hmm. two weeks before a fight. Immune systems run down and I couldn't fight it off. And the first one I had it in my ankle and it actually got into my joint. They had to do an emergency surgery cut me open and wash out my ankle. Um, so I was in the hospital for like eight or nine days. That was fucking horrible. You so know, I know it, it's my ankle was so swollen when they were done, they couldn't sh uh, stitch me completely shut. So I had a wall, I had an open wound on my ankle for like two, like two months. Yeah. It's, you know, people and talk about Philly being dirty, but come on, brother. Let's use some soap no, when you shower. It's just, it's just <laughs> fucking, so it was summertime, and, and, was, and it was just. Yeah. You don't got to explain. We've all lived in gyms for, for our lives, man. man. I get it, man. Look it, at, look at Rock, like Rockhold, like the shit that he would have. Like He had some, some nasty ones. So. Oh, yeah, he's a stank ass. I would boy. never wish that shit on anybody, though. No, it's horrible. It really is. And it's so funny because when you walk into a wrestling room, right, it smells like bleach. And everyone's like, oh, this is so disgusting. I'm like, yeah, but we don't Whoa. have staff in our gym. Yeah, so I'm yeah. cool with it smelling like bleach because, you know, you bleach it either in the morning and then you let it dry and then yeah, guys yeah, wrestle yeah. and then you bleach yeah. it after. Yeah. Like, we're not messing around, man. Like, I'd rather nah, walk into nah. a shitty smelling gym than, ha than uh, get staff and lose my arm because of it. Uh, eventually, when I do open a gym, like, that's something I want to do. I'm done fighting. I'm going to have that shit fucking immaculate like i'm not fucking around with that shit can, can, can i can i please it. talk you out of owning a gym uh, please let <laughs> me talk sorry you sean. here here's sean you i want you i want you, you to know do this. it i i had a gym was thirty thousand square feet my main mat was thirty. i want to say four thousand six hundred square feet okay and that's at, huge at 10 o'clock at huge. night when i'd close the gym down I'd mop that son of a bitch yeah, every night yeah, okay yeah. with bleach and it's like after about a year of just mopping that, you go, what the, just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to hire us. You got to pay someone. No, nah, you don't have the money to. You're, you're a gym the owner. Pay people, man. You're, you're a gym, gym owner, owner, brother. You don't got money. <laughs> don't act nah, like, I'm, nah, that's I what agree. we're telling you. The, the money don't come from the gym. Now, look, <laughs> my, mine was a lot smaller. Mine was only about 7,500 square feet. A lot easier to take care of. I had a CrossFit side and a Jiu-Jitsu kickboxing side. So I kept it very small. I kept it as clean as I possibly could. It's just, it's tough. You know, yeah, you've got to make sure you have people that have a spot there, right? Yeah, I do. But I, I sold it to a corporate gym now. So now okay. I do is I'm just basically an investor. And yeah, well, bigger the problem gym. is people think MMA gym and they think fighters. And we no. know firsthand fighters Nobody. are the most selfish, cheap motherfuckers on the planet. And they, they make the biggest everything. messes in your gym. They and want all, everything and for chase free. off all the people that pay money. Chase yeah. off all the people who try to bang all the girls. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, I, like I know it. I know this yeah. story too well. So I'm not going to set my, I'm going to have like a nice jujitsu program. I'm going to, I do want to coach fighters because I feel like I definitely can uh, give back a lot. Do like, it at the I gym do, you train at now. Don't do it at your gym. gym. Like, it will be at Marquez yes. MMA with the guys like, my gym will be a jujitsu, like kick, like we're going to have nice classes, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a long, I'm 31. That's a long way. That's no. a long way down the road. I told, I told myself when I opened my gym, you know, I made my gym all white on the inside, light gray mats, you know, white yeah. walls. Yeah. And I said, my gym is going to be a soccer mom gym. Like they come in yeah. for cardio kickboxing. They come in for a little bit of Muay Thai. They have an all girls, you know, jujitsu class. Pays your bills. Yeah. That's they've got the, bills. they've got, they've got their kids in jujitsu mm -hmm. while they're working out doing CrossFit yep. on the other side. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm not, I'm not doing the fighters. You guys want to come here and train? <laughs> you can train with me afterwards, like when the gym's yeah. closed. Yeah, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. of us would come in and yeah. train, but. If you You're really want to be soccer moms and I'm losing fucking out on Timmy's tuition now, yeah. like it ain't happening. Uh -uh. You, know, like, you know, if you want to be a fighter, AK is right down the road. I refer yeah. everyone to there. They've got a lot of talent down there. I know that yeah. I know them firsthand. They're very good. Go for yeah, it. For, for, I, sure, for Sean, sure. I, I got to ask you this because you, you said you were just in the gym. You, you're, you're a week off of your fight back in the gym now, as far as you said you were lifting. Yep. I, yep so I, I got to ask you this. How much do you deadlift? Because God damn it, your erectors and back start at your back of your knees. He's not saying erection. He's saying erectors. Erection, I, didn't say I, erectors. I hit uh, I do a lot of trap. Like I don't do straight bar anymore. I do the trap 
like the trap bar. Yeah. I think I, right before this camp, um, I hit 600 on the trap bar. Congratulations. Was, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'll but, tell you what, um, you're back. It's something about Philly fighters. Cause Eddie yeah, Alvarez, yeah. Eddie, thing, man. Yeah, yeah. dude, you, you actually beat Eddie and that's hard to do. Yeah. If, if you see me and Eddie and like, I'm actually like a lot like thicker than, uh, oh, yeah. Eddie gets, of course. Eddie gets, fa- I love Eddie death. Eddie gets fat. But I'm a lot, <laughs> ah, I'm definitely, there it is. My boy, He's also we older did, though, uh, bro. He's older. We did a, yeah, no, nah, exactly. <laughs> we did a uh, Brooks running shoe commercial and my man was like 202 or Damn. something like that. Oh. Thick. He's got, he's got but, that uh, that married he's life, it. man. He's, he's already, he has already. Nah, he's got that. He's got that. Re- he's got that retired life. Nah, yeah. I think he's got like um probably one more bare knuckle in him, which would be which would be cool. Hopefully they come to Philly. That's what I'm I'm yeah. hearing. But yeah. um, yeah, no, nah, I've been lifting for forever. Like I like it's like especially now that I have the time. Like right after a fight, I'll be crushing it in the gym for for a little bit. What is it with you, Philly boys, man? You guys love your weights, man. Like that old. I, every time I think of Philly boys and that's the the wrestling and the barrel chested and the rounded yeah, backs, yeah. I think yeah. of I th- I get the that like um, uh, Sylvester Stallone just iron lifting like real iron plates, not these rubber <laughs> bumpers and shit. That's all the I think of, is, man. Yeah, uh, when I first started like training with Eddie, Eddie doesn't know dog shit about lifting about <laughs> nutrition like he he came he came to i was at a crossfit gym at this time my man showed up and we were about to do like uh like a crossfit workout like yeah we were doing cleans and sled pushes and all that he starts wrapping his hands i was like eddie like what the fuck are you and i'm like shaking up my shaker i got like bcas pre-workout like electrolytes he's like what do you got in there and i i was just naming off this shit and he's like He's like, I don't know what the fuck any of that is. Like, Eddie's just like naturally, like genetically, like you tell him to go do something, he would just do it, you know. But yeah. he's not like I'm super big into like work, like training and like programs and like I do like the West Side like conjugate method with my strength coach. Like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Whereas like Eddie's just naturally fucking jacked. That's crazy, man. Like I've yeah. I've known Eddie for a long time. He fought in the Bodog era there, and you know, obviously Elite XC and the Bellator and all that stuff. He fought everywhere. He fought everywhere. Yeah. Dream and yeah. all the places, man. But yeah. I mean, you guys have had a good group of guys come through your gym. I mean, give us yeah. some. You know, give you train with Joe Pfeiffer, right? Yep. So him, and then uh, you know, and then uh, we have Paul, uh, who else? You guys got? Have, so we have. It started off with Felder was the first one in the UFC. Um, my other coach, Jonathan Webb, he went, he got to the UFC. He went on two, unfortunately, but he still made it to the UFC. And then it was me. We have me, Joey, uh, Pfeiffer, Jeremiah Wells, um, Pat Sabatini. Mm-hmm. We have Andre Petrowski fought on the same card as yep. me that night. We had, and now the cool thing is like, we have guys traveling to tra- like train with us from, we have a lot of Russians and Uzbeks coming in. We have the kid uh, Nursultan Ruzabayev. He uh, he's, he took that. He was two and zero. Fought that fight against Buckley short yep. notice. But now he's fighting. Um, Dude, he's, he's he's got a lot of fights on his record. He's bro, good. He's got an insane amount of fights. He's fighting. Um, what the hell is the guy's name? Wrestler undefeated at one seventy. He just fought Nicholas Dalby. Um, oh, um, no idea. What the hell? Who you got there well, for us, George? He, he's like, he just fought Dolby, and then before that, he had a draw against Aleski Dos Santos. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we have like, we, we're at that point now where our gyms are getting big, and guys are coming from all over yeah. the place, you know? So then I have um, two guys who are like my main like secret training partners. One kid's six and zero. Oh, he's um, Ukrainian, and then the other guy's Georgian, and he's five and zero, oh, and Dude, I don't know what they breed these Georgians <laughs> out of, but he's the hardest puncher. He knocked out an Olympic wrestler for PFL, yeah. and then he got brought in to fight Lucas Barboza, uh, the jiu-jitsu guy, and beat Lucas. Huge upset. So, yeah, we have we have some good guys. What's the guy's name, George? He's right. Oh, Fakr Dinov. Oh. Yeah, Fakr Dinov. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have, we have a good staple of guys, man. And uh, we had them, like, I had like 20 guys out in, um, Vegas. We've got a big Airbnb. All my coaches were there, wife, parents. So that's kind of how we roll like big, just a big family. And wherever we go, we travel pretty deep. I saw that, um, 
your clip of that, you know, the video footage of you leaving the house, this and that. I yeah, figured it was an Airbnb. Yeah. A lot of yeah. fighters are doing that. The UFC is kind of doing that now too. Like, let's set you off the strip away from everything and distractions. It's the, it's the best. It, it's, you can cook all, cook all your own food. Uh, we get ones with saunas at them, pools. Like, it's it just makes your life so much easier. So when we uh, – I was just traveling for the PFL at the Fort Lauderdale show doing the behind-the-scenes stuff. But what you, what the footage you got though was exactly like kind of the footage I was getting with some of these guys is yeah. what's that feeling though? Like when do you start feeling the nerves when you're leaving the house, giving your wife a hug, goodbye, giving family hugs, or when you get to the actual arena, is yeah. it when you're making yeah. the walk into your locker room? Is it when you're wrapping your hands? When are you getting that feeling of like, okay, it's really fight day. It's fight time. It's probably, probably like the, the walk, but like the crazy thing is I, I was actually talking to my wife about this the other day. I've gotten so much comp like from the Bilal fight before that, like I wouldn't remember any of my fights. Like I would go in there and like kind of whatever would happen would happen. And then afterwards I'm like, what the fuck could like just happen? Like, I don't even know. I'd have to watch the fight to remember. I started working with a couple of um, sports psychology guys and all I've worked on with them, like from then until now after the Bilal fight is being present and like just being in the moment. In the moment. There you go, baby. This, Dude, this fight, like, I remember, like, I was talking, like, I remember talking to my coaches before the fight, in between the rounds, I remember hearing people, like, my corner, my teammates in the crowd, like, I just, I literally remember the entire fight, whereas if this was two years ago, I couldn't tell you what the fuck happened, so I almost don't even get, ner like, you get a little bit nervous, but, like, now I'm just so focused on what I'm going to do in those moments, and just... Going moment by moment, not thinking about the next round or this. I'm just being so present that I don't even have time to think about being nervous. You know, I'm just focusing on everything and controlling what I can control. And that's what I think has really led to me being as successful as I, I am. And it's it gives me confidence. And that's what I've kind of I feel like I didn't have in the Balalfa. I didn't have that confidence in myself because I know how good I am. But I was kind of doubting myself, like maybe feeling like I didn't belong there. But um, this entire week, like even all the people at the UFC, they're like, man, like you just seem like doing all the media and everything. They're like, you're really embracing this and you just seem like a completely different person. And I am. People don't realize, uh, maybe it's different because you just said it. I feel like you feel the same way. It's not nerves as much as it is like excitement. You're, you're, yeah, all the hard yeah. work you've put in has finally got yep. you to where you believe you, you should have been the whole time. And that's where I'm at now where it's like I used to get so nervous before fights. And now I'm like, man, like I can't wait to go show you motherfuckers what I've been doing and just get in there. And now I'm at like a point I'm so comfortable with like I did everything I could do over the last 10 weeks. Like yeah. if I go out here and I get knocked out, that's that's what was supposed to happen. I can't control that, but I can go out here and put my every I put my all into this performance. And if I do that. I'm going to win this fight. And yeah. I just, and I know that if I do that against anybody and I'm present in that moment, I'm going to win. I saw a quick little snippet of uh, Joe Pfeiffer and he basically said that you would just kick his ass in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was one of the most, it, look, it, it's very rare that you have your teammates, you know, they'll say, oh yeah, he's doing really great. You know, he does yeah, this to me, he yeah, does yeah. Yeah. But I loved how original he was, like how, how authentic he was about, man, I got to deal with that beast over there, that guy, yeah. <laughs> you know, just Joe's putting it up. open book. You he's know? an open book, man. But yeah, it's, uh, we, 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 Joe, he, he'll, he'll tell you straight up, but, um, yeah, no, he's, Joe, he's probably one of the most, deadly guys on the feet that we had but that gives me kind of like if i can take a punch from joey yeah. i can take a punch from gilbert you know like but yeah joe it is funny because you know how we are most guys like oh yeah we have good rounds you get it you get over on joey he's like yeah he beat my ass like <laughs> so he, he, at least he's honest yeah yeah all right so uh, i'm gonna leave you with two things though but uh, one of them is i saw a thing that you did with karen bryan afterwards and I, I, I look, I don't live in Philadelphia. I've never lived in Pennsylvania. Brother, really? Who the fuck puts ketchup on a fucking Philly cheesesteak? Oh, it's embarrassing. Because you, you ain't from Philly, dog. <laughs> That's <laughs> like <laughs> disgusting. Ketchup. You're ruining ketchup. that what shit. What are you, Rampage what? Jackson? Oh. Ketchup. <laughs> He's the only guy I would know that would do that. Uh. Ketchup ketchup and fry, fried onions. Speaking of cheesesteak. I'll do fried I, onions. I, fried onions fried are great. On, I haven't had a cheesesteak since. Me and my wife did a, the Philly Broad Street run. It's a 10-mile run. Uh -huh. Afterwards, I'm like, all right, I'll have a cheesesteak. 
I haven't had a cheesesteak in a long time. Oh, but man. if I do have it, I'm squirting some ketchup all over. Uh, <laughs> you son. I want oh. proof, though. I want video footage, right. and I want it directly sent to me. I you, want listen, proof. If you guys are ever in the city, let me know. We, I'll take you guys out. Oh, yeah. I'm not putting ketchup that, on mine, brother. I don't care what oh, you no. say. I'll put, I'll put some hot sauce. But all right. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing, man, the Eagles got the Falcons uh, this weekend. How do you see it going? Eagles. Birds. Yeah. Two are going to be two. Well, I'm, they're I'm both going, birds. I'm going. The, the, real, <laughs> the Eagles. The Eagles. The good bird. The good bird. I'm going. Me and my. Uh, so my strength coach works with uh, a bunch of the Eagles players. He's, nice. Lane, he's Lane Johnson's um, strength coach. And uh, I lift at Lane's house three times a week. Nice. So. I'm really cool with those guys. I'm going to the home opener on Monday, so it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Awesome, awesome. All right, brother, we're gonna have a little side bet though. Hundred bucks, yeah. hundred bucks. My Chiefs beat you, your Eagles again. Ooh, it's gonna be easy. It? I mean, whether it's bucks. whenever they play each other, I think they'll play in the right. they'll, they won't play in the playoffs, but they'll play in the Super Bowl if they get there. So, all right, let's 100 go. Hundred bucks. On this is this shows the proof. Yes, it is. Yeah, I got the footage. Right. We got the footage. All right. All right. Yeah, dude, go. he takes forever to pay. I'm I don't take it's Venmo right. though, because I'm used to be winning. That's it. why I'm not used to having to pay oh, out. Man. I'm used he'll to winning. Get, he'll, mail he'll, me, he'll mail me a check. I'm used to winning. That's why it says right here. It says wow. it says massage only. <laughs> he's only he's only owed me steak forever. Uh, well, I don't see him anymore. I mean, he, yeah, he decided it. to go do, go work for Pafelator. And so since he started excuse working me, for uh, Pafelator. Excuse me, who is going for Pafelator? <laughs> so Crazy. I don't see him anymore. I don't see hey. him. I see him on, on our on our show, and that's, that's it, man. It, man. Sean, I want to tell you this, you know, leaving off. First off, fight career, you're on fire. Continue yep. in the direction you are. You know what has gotten you there, and just continue yep. on. And up here, that is exactly what being in the moment, but on top of that, congratulations on your daughter who's coming. Yeah. That's gonna it's gonna soften you up. Uh, so <laughs> just keep on working hard yeah, because yeah. man, I'll tell you what, she's gonna have your rap. Yeah. That, know, is, a, that is an now, awesome thing. BJ Thank Penn so said much, it man. best, yeah. man. BJ Penn the said it best. The yeah. fighting's cool. Like, it's awesome, but um I can't wait to be a dad. It's gonna oh, be it's awesome. the best. It's, I, I can't a, wait. So. I'm gonna tell you, you know the from an old man, I'm telling you this because I got, you know, now I have how many grandkids? I got six grandkids. And uh, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than being the dad. Yeah. Because that's what life is really about yep. family. Yep. And yep. you're, you're going to love every minute of it. Do, you know, try to catch it. One of the things I love about my man, Josh, is he's always there for his kids, he's always yeah. taking the time to be at the things that are important to them. And that's what you do. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, it'll make your life special. So again, congratulations. Thank you so much. Like I Sean, it. like, it's funny. Yep. I, I was telling the story is that, you know, my dad worked a lot so I could play sports, you know, and be re in wrestling and travel yeah, for yeah. wrestling, yeah. traveling yeah. for soccer and this and that. So if my game and my matches weren't on a Sunday, man, he couldn't make it. You yeah. Know, unless it was like a later game on Saturdays where he was off already, you know? So mm -hmm. those are like, honestly, like for me, I spend all my times at my, at every practice and everything yeah. I can make yeah. it to. So yeah i'm telling you man it's it's a blessing it really is it, yeah. cha it changes you so uh just keep your focus on you know I will. <laughs> but I will. but it's it's uh it's definitely it's definitely eye-opening but it's very pleasurable man it's it's so much yeah. fun to be a father oh yeah thank but, you guys i appreciate it but hey man i want to wish you the best of luck moving forward yep. we'll try to get you on again before your uh next fight hopefully yep. december january is what we're looking yep. at and uh, i'd love to have you on to talk it up and uh move forward but, brother, yeah, I appreciate good. you taking the time, man. And, uh, John, uh, anything else? Ladies and gentlemen, the future champion in the welterweight division, <laughs> Mr. Sean Brady. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Me,